The extended stay visa program in the Bahamas is up for one year, up to one year, and it allows you to work and stay in any islands or all of the islands in the Bahamas. So you can actually island hop because, uh, you, you know, Bahamas has so many islands like there's uh, Andros Island, Bimini, Grand Bahama, Exuma with the pink sand. Um, or if you want to stay in the capital in NASA, um, they have excellent broadband. And the program is open to students, uh, tech people, either large firms or small firms, um, you know, who where you can work remotely and, and maybe even if it might be even permanent for you. So um, for students, obviously, you know, because they're doing a lot of online learning now, it allows them to be close to Canada or the U.S. It's a very short flight. Um, but to be in a warm climate, you know, where you can enjoy the sun, the sand and the beaches and you can do your schooling and if you have to go back um you know back to in class or if you have to go back home for whatever reason you can do so uh, in terms of um tech like large tech companies who have uh, you know remote options so people can work wherever in the world and still earn money so that's good for them so that's an option there and then small firms maybe who want to just shift operations for a year uh, allowing people to work off their laptops because all you really need is a laptop and reliable Wi-Fi or reliable broadband. You know, some people want to use hardwiring. They will use uh, the Ethernet to connect um, if the Wi-Fi is trippy. So people in this program can, you know, work remotely for a company or even start their own business. However, the business and the work itself has to be international. It can't be a business that you set up in the Bahamas. It has to be overseas. Things to do in the Bahamas. So on Sunday nights, the fish fry in NASA is popping. Go here at the fish fry Sunday night. Lots of music and clubbing happening here. But I am going home. I actually went there for dinner and I had I actually had a, a free voucher to get a dinner for up to fifty dollars. Um, you know, because I sat into one of those timeshare meetings and you know they gave me that. So I went to this nice restaurant and they gave me like I ordered like a seafood platter. So I had like fish and I think I had lobster tails and of course rice salad it was a huge portion as a matter of fact i couldn't even eat all of it i had to take it um back out home um not home but to my airbnb where i was staying because it was a lot of food it was good food but it was a lot of food um you know and just people liming drinking hanging out and eventually it got dark and you know the parties were still going it was just really nice um so i'd highly recommend that you go check that out the fish fry also, obviously, in NASA, you have Atlantis, so huge theme park, aquarium, uh, water rides, uh, you know, for the kids. I didn't actually um, explore it myself. I just, because I think I, I just had decided that, you know, I'm going to go and try a submarine tour. So, and it, it actually had a boat tour with it because they have to drive you out to where you're going to kind of dive. This is the reef right now. Oh, wow. We sit in about, uh, about 35 feet of water. 35 feet? Gorgeous. That's why your ship is, um, your ship have to stay anywhere from about, uh, There's about my ship. miles away from the island so they don't Graze. destroy the reef. But can it, is it strong enough? Like, can it come here if the reef wasn't here? Would it um, be able to come? It'll, it'll kind of be a little edgy. Um, yeah. They'll be just barely scraping the bottom. Okay, we don't but where they are now is only about 75 feet of water right on your ship. Like, right here it's only about maybe like 35, 40 feet. So that was nice. Um, and when I say submarine, it's basically you go underwater in your own little tube, but your head is is not wet. It's, you know, it's covered with like a, 
a glass covering and it's open at the bottom and then you have your oxygen ta tank at the back and you start riding a bicycle underwater and there's a balloon that stays above water so they know where you are so it's a pretty cool thing it was kind of like riding you're riding underwater and you're going on this like excursion underwater and you're seeing tropical fish those come out of nowhere right those are the yellow tails yellow tail snappy oh wow the size of the dinner plate right there you know. Very good eating. This is a part of our diet. Okay. A lot of fish? Fish, spiny lobsters, and conch. Before we went, because of the water pressure, they told us, you know what, if you feel uncomfortable, um, let us know. Just put your thumbs up and uh, we'll come and get you and take you back to the boat. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like your emergency sign, like you want to go up. So, you know, as, as the tour started going, I was monitoring myself. I was okay. But then we got to a certain deep depth and they started to feed the fish. So, you know, they gave us food to feed the fish and then the fish were like coming right up to our, our heads and like eating. Uh, it was kind of funny to see. And that's when I started to get queasy and I'm like, oh no, like maybe I need to go up or we're almost at the end. Should I hold up? And then it got to the point where like, you know what, I don't think I can hold it anymore. So I told them, you know, I got to go. So one of the guys came and got me and we started riding back, riding back to the boat and I could see the boat and oh my god, as soon as my head came above water, I threw up. So I got seasick. And then guess what came and started eating my vomit? It was gross, but I was like, okay, um, whatever. So there's that. You could do those types of tours. You could do a food tour. I did do a food tour in Bahamas and got to sample local cuisines. Um, little bite-sized meals like conch. And they make it in different ways. They grill it, they fry it, um, you know, steam it. So that was nice. Get your conch salad and some other sweets, some local sweets. And then they take you along, you know, some historical areas explaining the history of the island. Um, so it was nice. And obviously shopping, you can shop in the capital or whatever island you're on. I did some shopping in Grand Bahama Island, Bimini. I didn't have time to do shopping because I was on a cruise. So uh, just hung out on the beach, visit some local restaurants um, and, and walked around. It was a very short visit. And yeah, but uh, Exuma I've never been to, but I hear they have pink sand and I think they have I think they have pigs there too. There were pigs left on that island. There's a story about that. Um, a local businessman came and, and uh, I don't know, something about he had pigs and he left and the pigs are still there. So I think that's pretty much, yeah, bah there are so many islands in the Bahamas. I have yet to experience them all, but if you guys have the opportunity to go there, to live there and work there, because they are one of the countries that have created one of these, you know, um, short-term visas for extended stay, especially now during COVID. Uh, so if you can swing it, 